Hallelujah. Sophomore year at 
Percy L. Julian High School. In this job, which was a very nice job, probably the best job I've ever had, my duties were to play basketball for four hours, have lunch, and then swim for four hours. All over the job because he was doing summer school. And those who were in summer school needed some supervision. So they called on other students to get that supervision. Needless to say, because I played basketball in the morning and swam during the afternoon, the thinking was out with some good shit. But see, what happened was there was an hour break in between the basketball and the swim. That was called our lunch break. Now, with this being a program for the, for the public schools of Chicago, they supplied us with lunch. Our needs were met. When my first time went up to the cafeteria, I said, I ain't gonna eat that. Salami sandwiches, little fruits and milk. So because I was working, I decided that I would buy my lunch. So I would go across the street and get me a pizza puff and some fries and a soft drink. God had supplied my needs, but my wants cost me. God had supplied my needs, but what I wanted cost me. See, what, 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 I, what I found out was that one day I forgot my money. <laughs> I played basketball in the morning and realized I had forgot my money. So I had to partake of the free lunch. I never tasted a salami sandwich that tastes so good in my life. <laughs>
peaceful home. That's bread. A growing family. That's bread. A good government with a good leader. That's bread. To have peace in your life. That's bread. To have love. That's bread. To have joy. That's the bread I need. Salvation. That's the bread I need. Isn't it good to know that our infinite God is concerned about the needs of his people? But if God is going to give us this day, our daily bread, if he's going to take care of our needs, if he's going to bless us, we need to learn to be blessed to be a blessing to others. Yeah. Too many times we want to keep the baby bread to ourselves. But what God has called us to do, he sees our needs. He meets our needs. We need to learn to see other people's needs. And learn to meet those needs. So there is Is there a substance? There's a source. We look at bread naturally, it just doesn't arrive. Somebody has to knead it, do all the things that need to be done, cook it, package it, get it to the store, put it on the shelf. That's a source to our bread. That source is God. We have to understand. That the substance is our daily needs. And the supplier of the substance to maintain our daily needs is God. The Bible says that God is our Father. The Bible says that His name is holy. The Bible says we should desire to be in the kingdom of God. And His will should be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hebrews 12 lets us know that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. We have to look at it like this, that in good times, God is the source. If you got a good job, Genesis 1 29 says, 
Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth. And every tree that has fruit to seed in, they will be yours for food. God has always been our source. See, many times we get puffed up with pride. And we think that it's us that's made a way out of nowhere. We think our talents got us the job. We think our talents got us the position. But God is the source. So there's a substance. We call it bread. There's a source. It comes from God. But not only is there a substance, and the source, then a supplication. Supplication is defined as the action of asking for something earnestly from God. The substance is great. The source is God. The supplication is simply give. Lord, I want you to give. Lord, I need you to give. Help in our bodies. Lord, I need you to give. Protection for our children. Lord, I need for you to give. Peace in my life. Lord, I need you to give. Joy in my spirit. Lord, I need you to give. Love in my heart. Lord, I need for you to give food on my table. Lord, I need you to give to have a right mind. Lord, I need for you to give a clean heart. Lord, I need you to give a renewed mind. Lord, I need you to give. I was young, but now, I'm old. Did I never see the righteous forsake? No, I didn't see baby bread. No, I need you to give. I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, God will. He will provide. Turn to your other neighbor and say, God will. He will provide.
He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase yeah. your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say righteousness. Yeah. You will be enriched in every way so you can be generous on every and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. See, we are the seekers. And God is saying to the seekers that he has promised an increase in the harvest. I don't know if that y'all should be shouting right about now. God said to the seeker, I have promised an increase in the harvest. If we are faithful, there will be an increase in the harvest. If you endure, there will be an increase in the harvest. If you walk in peace, there will be an increase in the harvest. If you walk in obedience, there will be an increase in the harvest. If you walk in darkness, this is love. There will be an increase in the harvest. If we trust in the Lord with all our heart, there will be an increase in the harvest. If we lean up to our own understanding, there will be an increase in the harvest. In all our ways, if we follow him, there will be an increase in the harvest. If we allow God to direct our path, there will be an increase. Somebody say increase. Somebody say increase again. Somebody may be thinking of an increase of money. But if we go back to the text, come on now. He said he would enlarge the harvest of your race. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a materialistic harvest. It's not a materialistic harvest. But it's a harvest of righteousness. And why is there a need for a harvest of righteousness? Because somebody else needs to glean from your righteousness. Hosea tells us, so righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up the unplowed ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. It's time for the people of God. It is time for the disciples. It is time for the ambassadors of Christ to be seeking him. But it says, it's time for time to see the Lord until he comes and soars his righteousness on you. When we seek God and we seek God's promise because God's promise is that his will for his people be done. Our resource is our instrument. The resources that God gives us are our instrument. It's an instrument of grace. Check this out. It's an instrument of grace for the salvation of others. Somebody missed that. Our righteousness is an instrument of grace to the Robinson for the righteousness of other folk. Why? Because we are disciples. And God is calling us to be disciplers. So our righteousness it's not simply for our benefit, but it's for the benefit of the unsaved. The unsaved folk at your job is for the 
He promised you. He never will leave you. Nor forsake you. See, when you look back over your life, And you think things over. Yes, yes. I can truly say. Yes. I can truly say yes. that I've been blessed. Yes. And I've got a testimony. Yes. You don't know what I'm Thank <laughs> you. 